This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome and aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we welcome David I, a lawyer who has come across the sea to Hawaii to lead the state's development of commercial technology, innovation, and intellectual property. David is the Chief Innovation Officer, which I really like that name, and Director of the Office of Innovation and Commercialization at the University of Hawaii. We're going to ask what his responsibilities are. What's he up to? David, welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you for coming. Uh, what is the Chief Innovation Officer? What does your office do? And, and, and where are you from across the sea? Well, how, how did you get here? So fill us in a little bit about your background, what you're doing, please. Sure. Um, start from the very beginning. I was born and raised in Taiwan okay. uh, and on the other side of the Pacific. Uh, and uh, came to the U.S. for grad school and ended up staying. And I stayed mostly in the Silicon Valley for more than 30 years, uh, where I studied more and worked more <laughs> and studied more. Um, and uh, in recent years, I've been helping Stanford University in their technology transfer program for six years and also uh, being uh, the director of a office very similar to what we have at University of Hawaii, but over there for City University of Hong Kong for four years, right before coming over last year. To, to Hawaii. To Hawaii. And of course, uh, prior to uh, the university environment, I also worked more than 20 years in Silicon Valley as engineer, engineer manager, marketing um, manager, director, VP, um, several startups uh, of my own and uh, six years of venture capital investment uh, in uh, mostly in uh, Northern California. So it would be accurate your background is in technology, innovation, and mm. a lot of it in Silicon Valley. True. Uh, I uh, professionally, I was trained uh, to be a computer scientist and then uh, uh, also picked up a Stanford MBA in the early 90s and then eventually got... Uh, attracted to law and finished a JD degree from Santa Clara University in IP law. And you're also a patent attorney. So I'm also a patent attorney now. registered in California. So you got a lot of technology type backgrounds and invention type backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I've also invented technologies and hold my own patents. Um, oh. So I like to tell people I've, I've tried out all the different seats around the table mm. uh, when it comes to technology and innovation. Well, okay. So, what what are you doing here? What is the chief mm. innovation officer? And again, I, I love that. I love that title. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like mm. something that mm. is a Disney almost. I mean, it's just a great title. What do you do? What What are you doing here in Hawaii? What What is your job? Yeah, uh, it really comes with two parts. Um, part number one is uh, we are supposed to uh, grow and sustain the innovation ecosystem. Um, encouraging entrepreneurship uh, within the UH, University of Hawaii, within the UH uh, system. And the other part is to assist the technology transfer part. Uh, a lot of our faculty members, graduate students, postdocs, or even undergrad students have created wonderful innovations. Hmm. Uh, and we try to do, seek either patent protection or simply use their copyrightable materials to find industrial or technology users out there uh, as collaborators, as sponsors, or as uh, licensees. Uh, and then we construct a relationship, we negotiate the contract, uh, and uh, hoping to commercialize the technology. Okay, well, explain what that means, yeah. commercialization of technology or yeah. technology commercialization. What yeah. What, what does that really mean well, for, 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 for guys like me? Explain no, it in simple terms. Yeah, in the simplest term, uh, some people say, uh, you know, doing R&D work in the university setting is to turn uh, money into technology. Um, <laughs> but commercialization is just the opposite. Uh, okay, They're trying that. to turn technology back into money. money. Okay. But then uh, we also like to uh, think of that conversion 
not measured purely by monetary terms uh, because it sometimes could be a little bit dangerous. Um, rather, we focus more on the impact. Um, University of Hawaii, like most other leading universities, we are the product of people's expectation. Uh, why do we exist? Because people believe that we, as an entity, we can do a better job than people could do on their own otherwise. So we actually owe it to the society that whatever pr products that we pr uh, could offer, for instance, intellectual property, innovations, inventions, we should really think about the societal impact. Um, so in cases where it's appropriate, we also encourage inventors to simply donate the invention to the general public. Uh, open source is a possibility, and there are other forms of such impact creation process. And so, especially in Hawaii, where you have a, uh, a native Hawaiian element, I guess, this, yes. how does that play in? I mean, that, that, that's interesting. How, how does that play into what you're trying to do and, and your goals? Yeah, it, it, it's a very important part because, uh, as you can imagine, uh, I just uh, mentioned that the, the whole point is about turning the invested assets back into some kind of an impact and the impact is supposed to reach the bottom line of the society. And therefore, it's very important to have a context of the, the sense of the place. And we want to make sure that we are true to that mission, that we return something of value to the state, uh, to the state's people, to its culture, heritage, and all that. Um, so in today's uh, global competitive environment, it's even more important uh, because Hawaii is perhaps physically very isolated. Right. But in terms of global competitive scene, it's connected to anywhere else, everywhere else. Well, you've got to explain that to me. How, how, is, I mean, how is that possible? How can Hawaii compete with Silicon Valley oh. uh, or, or China, yes. for that matter? How yes. is that possible? We're out here in the middle of the Pacific. I mean, it's a nice place. <laughs> we love to live here. Yeah. Great environment. Yeah. But we're, we're, it seems to me, in mm. my mind, that we're far away from a lot of that technology. Mm. Development place, pl mm -hmm. pl places where you develop technology. Mm -hmm. So how, how can we, mm -hmm. how, do, how do we deal with that? I uh, sometimes uh, joke about uh, uh, our job being helped by two global trends. Um, and in sort of a negative tone, one is that uh, the world is truly flat. Um, and therefore... <laughs> Kids, our kids in the future will have to compete. Kids from Mongolia, from Pakistan, from uh, um, Belarus, from all over the world. Uh, you, we cannot protect our kids by building walls, um, well, either physical walls or uh, mental walls, uh, and, and try to protect them that way. And there is also another even bigger trend that's called robots. Robots are coming. The computer programs, artificial intelligence programs are coming. And they are going to replace much of our low-end, repetitive, mundane jobs uh, for the future. And therefore, we have to prepare our new generation for that kind of future, where they have to find new differentiators. Uh, so getting back to a, a, a more positive side mm -hmm. of the same question, how can Hawaii compete? Right. Well, you actually mentioned a very important part of it. That is, we love this place. Well, it turns out that we're not unique. We're not strange. The whole world loves Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So if you really think about the future of jobs, most of the high-end jobs would involve high level of knowledge, knowledge acquisition, knowledge manipulation, new knowledge generation. It does not depend on the physical location anymore. Mm. I lived in Silicon Valley for 30 some years. I lived in Hong Kong for four years. Let me tell you, I really, really like living here much better <laughs> because I can be just as effective. I can drive myself working just as hard as any of my former colleagues in Silicon Valley or in Hong Kong. But at the end of the day, I get to watch the sunset uh, dropping into the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> mm -hmm. I get a sense of a closely knit community. I have a lot of uh, new friends here, and I make a lot of connections, and people here are friendly, and the whole atmosphere is different. 
This, I think, is uh, the future of workplace in the most ideal state, that you can truly blend your personal life fulfillment with your prof professional life aspiration. And there's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and I think that we ought to think about that um, yeah, as we move forward and pushing some of our programs. And, and I hear you saying that mm -hmm. the future is going to be high tech around the world, that, that in order to be competitive, or may, I'm not sure if you're saying to survive, but we need, in order to develop and, mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. on the same level mm -hmm. on that flat world as most of the rest of the world, we have to have this technology. And I, there, there may be people that may say, I don't agree, right. or, or well, why do we have to do that? Understood. And, and yet, I, I can see your point, is that if, if we don't do it, mm -hmm. we're, we're left behind. And then, you, and then I, I can also understand now what you're saying about Hawaii being an attractive place. You don't, you don't have to live in mm -hmm. China or Silicon Valley to do this high-tech right. high de development mm -hmm. or attract people. And as a matter of fact, I think we have a lot of high-tech billionaires that come to Hawaii, right? Yes. And so is that, is that an accurate summary of what you've said? Yes, yes, but with one uh, very important caveat, mm -hmm. and that is uh, I don't believe that we're advocating that everybody becomes an engineer okay. or a, a nerdy person. Um, I neglected to introduce a, a part of my um, background. My uh, undergrad degree was in psychology. Okay. And I actually quit a PhD program in social psychology out of uh, uh, Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. So I have a very healthy uh, uh, respect for humanity side of things and for social sciences. It's actually important. Um, we're not saying that everybody becoming an engineer, mm -hmm. but it is important to remove the phobia and to gain a sense of uh, familiarity as well as comfort working with technology. How do, how do we do that? I mean, how do we balance those right. competing feelings? They're, they're right. almost feelings, aren't they? Right. They are. Yeah. They are. Part of it is just uh, the, having the opportunity, the access to such technologies and also some fundamental trainings. The trainings, again, we should not be focused on turning everybody into an engineer, but how do you become comfortable? How do you participate? Uh, for instance, when you look at any Silicon Valley large and very, very successful high-tech companies, you're going to find at least 20%, if not more, people having training nothing to do with high-tech. You know, that's very interesting. The point that you make uh, is almost a humanistic yes. point. And that is, uh, if we understand not, not only each other right. all around the world, but if we understand technology, and that it's not a threat. Is, is, Correct. Uh, am, I Correct. Hear, am I hearing uh, that? that? Exactly. That exactly. We, we can learn to live with it and develop appropriately mm -hmm. and not succumb to it, if you will, right. and, and not feel it's a threat that has to exactly. be destroyed or fought against. Exactly. That, okay. In fact, uh, even in uh, the area that we care a lot about, the legal environment, uh, I think Hawaii, in fact, has a, a, a very unique potential. Uh, that we being somewhat away from the mainland and also our legislature is actually more um, um, integrated, if you will. It's fairly right, small. Right. Yes. We can actually even lead relative to California. We can actually have some uh, unique uh, legislative pieces to really enhance our position. And I want, we're going to take a break. Yep. And then I want to ask you a little bit more about that. Sure. Tell, tell me what those are. So we're going to take a, a short break and yep. be right back yep. with, with David I, Chief Innovation Officer at the University of Hawaii. Thank you very much. We will return sure. in a minute. Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. I'm Andrew Lang, the host of Security Matters Hawaii. I'm airing here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, and I'm trying to bring this community information, security information specifically, that will help you live a safer life, help keep our communities safer, and help keep our, our businesses safer. Um, so join me, because security matters. Aloha. 
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back. I am Mark Shklov, the host of Law Across the Sea at Think Tech Hawaii, and I am here with David I, uh, the Chief Innovation Officer at the University of Hawaii, and uh, we're talking about uh, how technology and human beings sometimes uh, can lose a lot of the feeling of threat if you just learn a little bit about them. And, and before our break, we were talking about how uh, you felt the legislature here, or the state government, perhaps, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, may have some ways to encourage that. And I'd like you to expound on that. Tell me a little bit more. Sure. Um, I think that I, in my previous life, I was involved in uh, some work in Europe. Um, and uh, I was utterly uh, impressed by what the Swiss uh, government has done. And this was during the time when a lot of Hardware engineers, because uh, the hardware design tools were so advanced these days, those days, that a lot of hardware engineers were losing their jobs. So they simply teamed up with local community colleges to offer conversion training to train those hardware engineers into uh, software programmers. Hmm. And I, um, you know, firsthand, I witnessed the transformation in some of the engineers I worked with. Within one year, they became excellent software engineers by attending classes at night. So it really, uh, uh, really, really impressed the heck out of me. And I think that over here, we have a wonderful potential as well. We have a lot of people that could be adequately trained and with just enough information, with just enough skills, they could actually enter the high-tech workforce, maybe not as a core design engineer, but they could be excellent application developers. And that would uh, make Hawaii more of an attractive place for technology development, commercialization, absolutely. inventors, innovation. Is that what? Is that what yes, it? yes. Uh, another thing that uh, I have uh, personally witnessed and been affected as well, in both uh, Silicon Valley and, and uh, Hong Kong or southern part of uh, China, people move around a lot. So this is a frustration of all the high-tech companies. They just barely train a person to be good enough. Boom, they uh, took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting a, a, a salary increase of you know, 30%, 50%. And, and, and therefore, in a place where um, uh, people don't move around that much, it's actually an advantage for companies, high-tech companies, to set up shop. Well, okay, so we got to keep them here, too. Uh, yes. And, 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 uh, and yes. now, how, what is the what can the is the legislature doing anything now, or or what can they do to to encourage that? I mean, can is there a, a specific program that's being uh, thought about right now? Uh, yes, uh, legislature actually has been doing a lot of things. Uh, just over last year, we passed um, Act Thirty Eight and Act Thirty Nine in the in the previous legislature session which will give uh, uh, University of Hawaii more flexibility when it comes to commercialization part. Uh, and so it wouldn't be uh, seen and held to the same uh, state entity uh, status when it comes to proc procurement and things like that. Because we mostly deal with very small entities and also privately held companies, a lot of uh, trade secret issues. I see. And, and so it was a major breakthrough. Um, and in addition, uh, legislature actually has released uh, quite a bit of appropriate funds uh, to encourage the establishment of local venture capital industry. So uh, in the form of uh, Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation and Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, both were created by legislative acts. And uh, so we are already doing a lot. Mm. But let me give you a couple of other examples where I think we, we might be able to do more. Please. Um, yeah. One thing is that, again, we're talking about access, being able to access the uh, uh, next generation infrastructure. 
So if we could actually do more in terms of Wi-Fi coverage, it not only would uh, make uh, Waikiki a very enjoyable place for our visitors. Because uh, everybody is on... on everybody yeah. will be on Wi-Fi. Wi uh, yeah. Now, we, we don't criticize our visitors in terms of not being able to let go of their you know, workaholic habits, yeah. but uh, it, it clearly is very beneficial. It would also help uh, it, visitors. It would encourage tourism then. Right, well, that's exactly. What I, you know, exactly. So it's not a competing with tourism? No, okay. No, not at all, not at all. It, and also, if you think about it, uh, in other parts of um, Hawaii, not just, well, we could expand beyond Honolulu, we, on uh, Oahu, and also on other islands. Mm. If we could also set up uh, Wi-Fi access to be more widely available, uh, low cost, or even completely free, mm. you can imagine the kind of uh, uh, creativity it can unleash. Of course, because everybody who's traveling, right. that's one of the, I mean, that, that's the reality of today's world. And exactly. maybe, maybe things will change, but right. right now, everybody looks when they travel Wi Fi accessibility. And if they know they're coming to a place, mm -hmm that has that available for a tourist, then I, I hear what you're saying, yeah. that's gonna work with tourism. Absolutely. Wow. And uh, another uh, area I think we could uh, do a lot of is that, uh, um, as you know, uh, Hawaii has a really great uh, history in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And University of Hawaii, when it was first founded, it was founded on the basis of an uh, agriculture college. So we still have a lot of innovations and a lot of uh, assets okay. uh, kept in our agriculture college called uh, CTAR, College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. And uh, we are working together trying to unleash those assets. High, high tech was that? With yeah, it is high okay. tech. Actually, you huh. will be amazed. A lot of our labs uh, in our College of Agriculture, if you visit them, you said that, am I in medical school? <laughs> because it's, it's wet lab, it's all the, the benches set up, and the hoods and everything. We are now going deep into the same issue. It's just life science research, hmm. but in plants, uh, in the microbes, uh, in, the, in the soil conditions, in the pests and the pest control mechanisms, in all of those areas, we have lots of those. So um, if in the near future we could actually envision an area where we could actually collaborate uh, with the government and also with the private sector to move some of the innovation systematically out of the lab into products, uh, for instance, we will just call them natural products uh, because uh, we have lots of uh, natural things, mm -hmm. uh, the, all the flowers that we build, that we, we, we plant, uh, all the oils, essential oils, we can extract out of them. They have certain beneficial uh, functions. And all the food uh, items that we actually uh, innovate, we have quite a few different species of food items. And also, we could encourage the development of food production, not in terms of raw food production like wheat and, and, and basic crops, but in high-value-added food items. We already have a lot of those. Uh, for, for instance, we have rum production, um, and we have uh, some wonderful chocolate um, right, production. Right, of yes. course, uh, coffee is a great success story. Um, we have those items that could be exported you know, widely throughout the world. And, and technology can in, in, encourage it. Is what, and, Absolutely. You know, and so we're not to be afraid of technology, but no. understand how it can work with agriculture and tourism, right. which I, I never... Right thought about that actually, but now that you, especially, you know, the tourism, I, I see bingo, that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah. uh, for technology to intertwine with tourism. The agriculture, I'm just, now, now that you mention it, starting to learn about it. Yeah, uh, in terms of agriculture and tourism, actually, our, our thinking is more than just that. Um, our thinking is how to connect our tourists to our land, to the state of Hawaii, in a deeper, broader, and more meaningful manner. Um, for example, we have actually a lot of very unique assets. Um, for all the tourists, uh, we probably cannot afford to invite all of them to visit our telescope. Yeah. Um, but for very few of them, uh, those that can actually make a contribution to our economy or to our technology development, 
um, we actually could open a small fraction um, to a small fraction of them to allow a deeper look, a kind of behind, uh, behind the scene view of our telescopes, of our research in marine biology. We have Coconut Island that is virtually controlled by University of Hawaii. It's wonderful research, world-class research facilities. And if we could actually open up uh, those possibilities to engage certain well-qualified pre-screen tourists uh, to actually try to build meaningful connections. And another example is that if we could actually work with our College of Hawaiian Culture. Um, right. Now, you, I, you, you got to pay attention to that. Yeah. Uh, you, you understand that. Absolutely. As a tourist, when I used to come to Hawaii as a tourist, mm -hmm. I always try to look for opportunities where I could actually observe true native Hawaiian culture, language, values, and practices. You know what? They're really hard to find. Uh, we're, we're, we're well, how are we going to do that? What, what, give me, give me a, a thought, please. Uh, uh, yeah. Think about this. If uh, DBET, which is uh, our major department of economic and business development and tourism, um, and along with the tourism uh, authority, could work with the University of Hawaii to actually craft some respectable program that will not exploit our Hawaiian way of living or their current lifestyle. We're not going to bring you know, tour bus after bus of uh, tourists that come down here and then ask, where's my McDonald? Yeah. You know, <laughs> so hopefully we can actually bring a different kind, different flavor of tourism that is deep and meaningful and allow outsiders to actually participate and feel the emotional connection to this land so that they actually, even when they go home, they will continue to have affinity to Hawaii, such that they will not only come back, but in the future, hopefully they will come back and retire, or they will come back and invest uh, mm -hmm. in the state of Hawaii. Yeah, and actually, uh, if they learn a little bit about King Kalakaua, they will know that he was into innovation yeah. and inventions, and I mean, way ahead of a exactly. lot of places. I mean, he, he had Iolani Palace lit Correct. with electricity before the White House. That's right. and, and so, I mean, he was really into those things, but most people have no idea right. That, right. That, about that at all. Right. Another part of innovation and creativity is the ability to tell a story. If you really think about it, that is so intertwined with Hawaiian culture. Now, uh, without a very effective writing capability, they have learned how to tell the story in dances, in storytelling, um, Pass from generation to generation. It's a wonderful, wonderful talent. And, and maybe, maybe, David, maybe the technology can help to preserve Absolutely. and pass it along. And, and, and David, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today and your ideas, and, and hopefully we can talk some more. And we are at the end of our program right now, and I thank you so much. Thank for you, the Mark. Thank you to have you here. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll be back in, a, in two weeks with another Law Across the Sea program. Today with David I was very interesting and opened my eyes up a lot. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mark.